In this video, we're creating HO scale models of authentic roundhouse interior and then printing and painting them. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're gonna uh, work with roundhouse interior. Yes, and we got the opportunity to cooperate with a, a railroad company here in Sweden called Skånska Järnvägar. And what sets them apart a bit from the others, the clubs, is that they run steamers in daily traffic. You know, in the regular traffic. So, the maintenance in their roundhouses looks a whole lot or is totally authentic compared to how it was back in the days when all the, the trains were uh, pulled by steamers. So we got the opportunity to go into one of their roundhouses, take photo documentation, measure all the object, and from that we made a 3D set called the uh, roundhouse interior. And to print this set we are going to be given the opportunity to cooperate with Anycubic. Uh, they have just released a new printer called M7 uh, Pro. And uh, this is uh, uh, it's a uh, fantastic machine, so we're going to showcase that. And also, <laughs> check out the new possibilities given with high-speed resin printing. So, what back in the days took 8 hours to print, now only can be printed in 20 minutes. And it's a kind of draft mode, so you do not really get exactly the, the quality of, of uh, a full length print, a normal print, but it's excellent to be able to, you know, make a fast print, see what the model look like before going into actual print. So we're going to cover that as well. Let's get started. So, this is the new uh, resin printer from Anycubic, Photon Mono M7 Pro. Starting at the back, the power supply is now built in, finally, and not a big box hanging on the cord. Another thing I really like is that they move the power on button to the front, so you don't have to search for it on the side or in the rear. The opening menu tells you a bit of the status of the machine. This machine has a number of self-tests, so it actually checks that everything's working before print is started. It also tells you the temperature of the resin vat. This is directly connected to this heater, which heats the resin vat or the frame of the vat. So the resin heats up and when that happens, it lowers the print into the resin so everything has got the right temperature before print is started. This vastly reduces the print failures and increases the detail level of the printout. Under the resin vat we find a 14K mono resolution display. Up here to the right there is a space for optional equipment. Uh, here is the air purifier which I am currently using. But here you can also fit a resin pump which uh, checks the resin level in the printer. Make sure that there is resin for the print. Fills the vat from a bottle standing nearby. The screw cork is removed and this one's put in place. Instead, this uh, nozzle with level check is motorized, so it raises when you need to remove the vat from the printer. Another nice feature, together with the high speed resin 2.0, we can now make draft prints, which is a really high speed uh, printing process. And we will be checking a buffer which I've been printing with all the printers I've tested so far. It typically takes 8 hours, it's said to take only 21 minutes in this printer. So here I'm setting the resin temperature to 35 degrees and then I hit the bottom for uh, preheat. Uh, then we'll go and collect the STL files, all the 3D models which we're going to print. This is the MRR Tutorials website. I'm clicking there to 3D models and then select line side items. Then we end up in the section for railroad technical structures. 
bahntechnische Bauten. Und hier haben wir ein Roundhouse Interior, das ein Set we uh, developed in Kooperation mit Skånska Järnvägar in Sweden. Und sie showed us the content of the shelves inside the Roundhouse. Und I'm sorry, I cannot tell you exactly what these things do, but there are replacement parts for steamers, that much I know. And this is uh, boxes with bolts and nuts. So we did 3D models of all this and included it into this roundhouse set together with some machinery we found also in, in the roundhouse. And this is a photo what it looks like when printed and ready. So $5 for the entire set and once you bought it and downloaded the files into your slicer it looks like this. Uh, well this is not all of them just a selection which I'm been printing in this video. And I will just move them together a bit to get more dense uh layout okay so now our uh, uh, resin is 36 degrees it's time to get started on the print so all we need to do then is to wait the remaining time is about one hour to print all these items now this was not made using the uh, the high speed print but for normal print but i wanted to compare the high speed printing process with normal printing and see what it actually looks like so starting with the first the very first printer i've been doing this i've been printing this buffer i've been priming it gray and then dry brushing it black to show all the flaws the layering whatever defects you might have so let's compare this now in microscopic view now remember that this is typically not visible for the naked eye this buffer took 20 minutes to print. I used high speed resin 2.0. And now compare this with a printout I did Craftsman's resin. This one took 8 hours and 45 minutes using the Ultra DLP printer, which was uh, introduced back in 2021. And again, compare this to the normal print speed I did with this M7 Pro printer. Uh, this printout took 4 hours and 5 minutes. I used Anycubic EBS-like. And uh, yeah, the surface structure you see here is mostly from the surface primer, I would say. So huge development over the years and this uh, high speed process is very valid if you want to make a draft. If you want to have a printout real fast to see what your model looks like then the high speed uh, resin with a high speed print process is definitely uh, something to go for. So here are the shelves now for the, the roundhouse. I'm also I've been printing some uh, cardboard boxes. Which I would um, will glue in the top shelf. We actually never opened them to check the content, but um, anyway, I'm gluing them in place here using facet glue. And uh, there are a number of different combinations of uh, cardboard boxes in the set, and you can turn them back and forth. These are bearings, uh, which we found also commonly on the shelves. It's uh, obviously a common replacement parts and here are the cones and those uh, blocks with holes in if you know what this is please comment in the comment field uh, i'm eager to <laughs> to learn more about uh, steamer parts and lastly here i'm painting some uh, boxes i think it was some kind of paint in these and i'll glue these in parts as well so this is what looks like i think very neat uh, to have in the roundhouse uh, together with the, the machinery so here's some milling machine or some a big compressor there's a euro pallet with some uh, spider buffers on it so yeah it's uh, very nice and then it's just to to glue it in place in your roundhouse don't forget to make the roundhouse real dirty and full of trash because that's uh, typically what they look like and here's also this uh, tool cabinet uh, on wheels, which is also very typical. I thought they have, I think they have one or two in each row there of these. And a barrel of grease, I would assume, or some kind of oil. Well, so uh, this is uh, the roundhouse interior set. If you run a lot of steamers like I do, then uh, also it's a good idea to plan for waiting tracks up by the station uh, where you can have uh, serviced steamers uh, idle so when a new uh, steamer in need of maintenance comes into the station it can be hooked off 
and a newly serviced steamer can take over and pull the coaches on uh, the line. All right, <laughs> roundhouse interior, there you got it. And the talk about uh, waiting tracks for steamers uh, and, and, um, and such will be covered in a later episode here on track work uh, design. But the, the thing is that you, you get a better flow if you run steamers on your layout and you have a locomotive station and you made great plans for all the facilities you, you have there. And you know, by experience, those tracks do not get used all that often and then they get dirty and you have to push the train through and it's no fun. But if you have a kind of a regular maintenance cycle with incoming trains and exchange lo locos uh, and you know do all the things then this, this is running much, smo much more smooth and you have use for the installation you spent a tremendous amount of, of area on your layout for. So, that's a that's a, a good thing, but it's coming up in a later uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, if you like the content of this channel and like to support the channel, please uh, become a patron. Uh, and you're not just only supporting the channel, uh, helping me to help you. No, you're also getting discounts. So actually, you can uh, get uh, <laughs> a profit from day one by becoming patron. And this month uh, the patrons get uh, discounts on Modelbound Union, 10%, and 10% uh, for the Model Railroad 3D, 3D models, and also a $20 um, uh, uh, bonus check for uh, buying this uh, Anycubic, uh, new Anycubic M7 Pro printer. So, Another uh, benefit with being a patron supporting the channel. If you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe to the channel, enable that little bell and uh, you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.